and embers fly wherever we were going. Fire and ice, we built our lives on survival. Alaska. It's a place that I've always considered as the pinnacle of hunting and a place that I've always dreamt of going to. The wilderness intrigues me and Alaska is truly the last frontier. From the dense forest to the Rocky Mountain tops and the treeless tundra, I want to experience it all. When deciding on an Alaskan hunt, one of my lifelong friends, Michael Palladino and myself, wanted to hunt the mountains and a tundra mixture for caribou which led us to the Brooks Range in Northwest Alaska. Planning a hunting trip there comes off as daunting and almost out of reach. Honestly, it can be without the proper planning and preparation. I talked with Kyle Hansen, who's a hunting consultant for Outdoors International. We wanted to get dropped off by a plane to hunt caribou in the mountains by ourselves. He found us the right transporter to make those dreams a reality. Doing the hunt ourselves rather than going fully guided saved us a ton of money and allowed us to plan it in less than two years, not to mention a sense of satisfaction from a DIY hunt. Making this a priority and not spending excessive amounts of money in other areas of our lives made this 100% possible for a couple of regular guys from the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. 2020 was a year of chaos and didn't make traveling easy, but that just made the anticipation that much higher. Foggy up there, man. They're all the way up in that saddle. See that up there, that big dip? Yep. They're at the very top of that. Okay. I saw them with my binos, and I thought I thought they were fake because they looked too dark. But yeah, they're bulls. Yeah, we'll just get rolling here. Watching two grizzly bears and a herd of caribou share the top of the mountain was an incredible sight for the first morning of hunting. Once the caribou bedded on the rock face, we gathered up our gear and headed up the drainage using the shallow stream bank as cover with hopes of sneaking over the top of the ridge to come in from above them. The tundra's openness didn't make it easy to stalk so we had to use the train features to our advantage. Looking at the mountain from the bottom, it looked like a relatively easy climb in the wide open, but the train was very deceiving. We were quickly humbled by the 8 to 10 feet tall alder bushes that were thick and the moss covered bowling balls on the top of the swampy ground that is commonly referred to as the tundra. All right, so we are just coming up towards the top here, getting out of all the alders and decided to keep an eye on those caribou that are up on the ridge. And it looks like all those bowls came back on our side and they're bedded there. So we got three of them that are big, big bowls and at least another five or six that are a little bit smaller and they're all just bedded right on top of this rock cliff just over the edge. So we're gonna keep with the same plan we had, get up to the top and try to rethink of what, what we can really do. But uh, it's a really, really good position to be in.
weather in Alaska is as unforgiving as I ever imagined it would be. From sunny skies to hail, wind, and rain in a matter of minutes, Mother Nature and these mountains definitely don't care about who you are or what you are trying to accomplish. Having good gear is a must in a place like Alaska, and even more importantly is knowing how to use your gear like the back of your hand. Being in the mountains always reminds me of the comforts that we take for granted back in civilization and has really taught me not to complain about the minor discomforts that we do experience in everyday life. The animals that call this place home are as tough as it gets. So we put a stock on and one of those, those bedded bulls that were up on top with the cows and a pretty nasty storm blew in. I'm pretty sure that they kind of just, they moved off that face because it was so windy. So I think they went over back over the backside. So as we snuck up and realized they weren't there, skirted back around. We're just going around the mountain just in case they skirted around the front. Maybe we run into them again. We just stop and take a break. Right here? Okay. See him. As we worked our way around the mountain, roughly four and a half miles from camp, we spotted some more caribou with one bedded bull, so we worked our way in for a stalk. As oftentimes happens while hunting, we made a mistake in where the bull was bedded in the vast tundra and bumped him with our wind blowing his direction. He stopped at just under 500 yards, where I used my pack as a rest, fumbled with loading the rifle, and finally took the shot. I was comfortable shooting at that distance, but incorrectly assumed my holdover. We confirmed the clean miss underneath the bull. I had to learn from my mistakes, clear my head, and move on focusing on creating another opportunity. With 20 hours of daylight this time of year, we still had time in which we located some more caribou even further away from camp. As we watched the now scattered herd across the landscape, I reflected on the day to this point. The caribou were not migrating yet, and we were hunting resident herds of small numbers, so it was important to take advantage of any opportunity that we had. Another day went by with only a few caribou sightings and watched another grizzly bear feeding on the blueberries just below the steep, rocky cliffs. Adventure hunts can be challenging on the mind, but you have to know that everything can change in an instant. Oh dude, we got caribou right here in the bottom. Like real close. All right, I got a bull right here. All right, let's uh, actually let's try to get a game plan. Don't move too like crazy. They're like not very far. I can see them with my bare naked eye right there in the creek bottom, like up a little bit. All right, let's go get them. Plans often fall apart and you have to overcome the challenges and adapt on the fly. It's important to me to show things that they happened, even if it's not perfect. When we worked within shooting range of the herd, they caught us by surprise as they must have crossed the creek ahead while we were crawling through the alders. A quick decision was made to move to the edge of the bank and get set up for a shot. Michael didn't have a clear opportunity from his position, so he gave me the okay to take the first shot at the big white main bull that was walking up the bank. I'm on the back one.
Yes, dude. Yes. Oh. I'm so freaking pumped. Oh. I hope Michael gets it though. Dude. Hey, that boy, dude. Crushed it. Thank you. Michael just doubled up on another bull about 120 yards above mine, walking through, going after the herd. Oh my God. Sweet redemption, baby. Right after I shot my bull, Michael got into position and squeezed around off at another bull. His bullet missed the mark, but he was able to cut off the confused herd and make a clean kill just above where mine expired. Things sometimes don't go as expected, but they always end up how they're supposed to. Oh, oh. Oh baby. Yeah. Right there, right behind the shoulder. Beautiful caribou. Double shoulder. Doubling on two great caribou with one of my best friends was something more than I could have ever asked for. It's funny that in my head, I'd envisioned us killing two bulls at the same time over and over again leading up into this hunt. Ever since last year in Idaho when I killed my first bull elk with my bow, Michael was right there to help me pack the bull off the mountain and I wanted to repay that favor. Less than a year later, I finally had that opportunity. After admiring how unique each of our bulls were, we had to make quick work of butchering the caribou and getting the meat back to camp to cool with the daytime temperatures quickly rising. The amount of flies and mosquitoes that were swarming us created their own unique, annoying challenges while having a watchful eye for any grizzlies that might have heard the dinner bells ring. Hunts like these are more about the journey than the end goal, but I'd be lying if I didn't say that I wanted us to come home with frozen boxes of lean, wild game meat and antlers that will create conversations for years to come. When the world seems like a crazy place, you can always count on the wilderness to escape the chaos and reset your mind, ultimately hardening you to become a better person in your life, job, and family. Adventure hunts of different magnitudes are available for anyone who wants to pursue them and put in the work to make them happen. Planning and preparation with your physical fitness, finances, research, and above all, the mindset to make it happen play a big role in it. All of these things combined with the dedication, determination, and accountability of what we wanted to accomplish led to an incredible experience that will be in my mind forever. I know one thing, I will be back someday to hunt the Alaskan wilderness above the circle. How do you define adventure?